Ooh, did you know <laughs> that there are downsides to wildlife photography? Mm. Yeah, uh, not many people talk about it, but there definitely is. Yeah. And we have been talking about this. We've come up with seven downsides to wildlife photography. It's a good start. Yeah, <laughs> there are definitely downsides. Yeah, cold fingers. Oh, I didn't even put that on here. <laughs> oh no. If you've watched this channel, you've seen me just like have a temper tantrum about this. <laughs> <laughs> Can't find it. Where is it? <laughs> because we spend a lot of time not finding anything. <laughs> a lot of time finding nothing. Well, we'd go out searching for specific things and not find it. Or, it's not there. Or even if we're not looking for something specific, it's just there's nothing out there like no active birds it's whatever the reason yeah. lights wrong blah 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 oh my gosh it it can be disheartening for me anyway it's don't get me wrong there's plus sides to all these downsides but you know we get to have a chance to go out but when it's one after another after another and you've hiked miles and miles and you don't find what you're looking for that's rough <laughs> and you find that a lot in the dead of winter and the dead of summer Mm -hmm. Don't you think? Yeah. 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 So this, the last probably what, six or eight weeks out of, let's say 15 or 20 outings, five of those, mm -hmm. just five, we found what we were looking for Yeah. and came away with photos and maybe a video for you. We have a lot of half videos sitting on the hard drives that just did not work <laughs> out, you know, mm -hmm. we got out there and maybe we're even in the right place. <laughs> But whatever it was, wasn't there. But we did get a lot of steps in. Yep. Yeah. Got lots of exercise. Uh, number two downside is it's heavy, expensive equipment. Camera equipment's obviously expensive overall. But when you're talking about wildlife and you've got this 200 to 600 mil lens and the camera with the battery, and maybe you have the teleconverter on there, this whole thing weighs a lot. And so you're wandering everywhere trying to find wildlife and it's so heavy and we've seen people wandering around with the bigger lens the oh, yeah. 600 f4 and that's like all they're carrying because it's so heavy <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you know like in my portrait work i could put this 70 to 200 on which is still heavy but i'm just wandering around like my studio or a little bit of you know natural area mm -hmm. with a client I'm not hiking miles and miles to get no pictures. <laughs> and honestly, a lot of gear is not made for the female body, you know, or bodies that have things in the way. <laughs> uh, because a lot of people love using those rapid straps, but those do not work for me. It hurts my shoulders. I have other things here that it digs into and mm -hmm. everywhere. Rapid straps don't work well for me. Uh, just show off my shoulder doesn't work well. So I often, you'll see me carrying my equipment on my hips, which is fine, but now I kind of feel like I'm lopsided. Yeah, heavy, yeah. expensive equipment is one of the downsides for sure. You're always gonna want new equipment. Yeah, but I've never been in any hobby in which you couldn't spend an infinite amount of money on any of <laughs> All those. right, yeah. I know. There's always better gear. <laughs> Uh, number three, downside to wildlife photography. You wrote this one. Sunrise and sunset hours. Yep. The best times to see critters or even good landscapes, usually you get your best light early morning, late evening. Okay, in the wintertime, in temperate zones, it's not too bad because, hey, it's 3.30, the sun's going to set at 5 tonight. So you can get up, get the sunrise. You can get up at 6 a.m. and you can be done by 6, 7 p.m. Ah, but in the summertime, yeah. Oh, you're up You can get up late. at 4 a.m. 4 a in the morning or earlier, depending how far, how close to the Arctic circles you are. I don't know, I, was, I lived in Minnesota for a while and I was doing astrophotography and I would be done by 3, 30, 4 o'clock in the morning because the sky was getting light already. So, and then if you're gonna hang around for an evening shoot on the same day, yeah, sunsets at nine o'clock, 9.30. Well, honestly, it's not <laughs> it can even be a that. long day. It's not really that with wildlife, though. It's that's when they're active. Yeah, that is really when you're going to see the activity. Yep. Uh, the owls that we've been finding, they're active at night, and then we, you know, we might have 
move around just a little bit mm -hmm. in the evening and the um, early, early morning. Yep. So really that's when the animals are active yep. for wildlife photography. And the reason that can be a downside is that that's it. Like yeah. you have seven days in a week, maybe you're at work, five of those. And if you go out for a sunrise on Saturday and you don't find the critter, that's it. You have to wait till that evening yep. or the next morning, depending on, you know, kind of the light source and how the light's doing that day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so sunrise and sunset and, you know, obviously a lot of a lot of different photographies like that. But I think it's especially true for the light and the activity for wildlife. Yes. Yeah. You also wrote this one. Number four downside to wildlife photography is... The weather. Oh. Yeah, we went out last weekend oh. to a place just north of Fort Collins. Take a look at some birds up there, some water birds, because there was a open water lake, or a lake with lots of open water. And the wind was about 45, 50 miles an hour, plus gusts. There was just no way. Yeah. No, you, there was no way you were gonna keep a camera still. Uh, we even tried lining up the car with some bushes nearby, and that helped, but it was you still couldn't get a really still camera. Oh, yeah. yeah and just... then the bird was all funky, like <laughs> hunkered down, also trying to stay out of the wind. Uh, hanging on for dear life. <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know, we've also said that bad weather is a good time. Oh, yeah. But sometimes it's just too extreme. Yeah. And your whole big gear is going to fall over. Um, or get just buffeted around, yep. or the critters are just not out. Hey, some snow is great. Too much snow, you can't see anything. Yeah, because so, <laughs> uh, sometimes the animals just aren't out. Yep. Same for heat. Yep. Uh, if it's too hot, windy, cold, yeah. So the wind and the weather and like your fingers <laughs> freezing off, yeah, that can definitely be a downside. Mm -hmm. um, here's one that I had. now. This is kind of dependent, like we're very lucky, we're both photographers, uh, but if you have a family and uh, your family is planning a vacation, wildlife photography will take over your vacations. I think <laughs> that can be a downside is yeah. because we plan our vacations around wildlife and other photography now. So our vacation last year was to Nebraska to see the Sandhill Cranes. But if you have a family yeah. who's not excited about that, uh, it's gonna be some problems. <laughs>
up level or change up the photography that you take. Don't try to mimic compare someone yourself else. with your past. Yeah, only yeah. compare to yourself. But it can be a real downer for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. 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 So just be aware of that. Yeah. One one anecdote from uh, my early days. I, I started out in astrophotography with film, and kind of the saying there for people beginning was. One shot in 60 would be a keeper. Oh, it wouldn't be good, but it'd be good enough to keep. So imagine how many of those you have to get before you get one that's just amazing. Oh you're, my gosh. You're talking years of work. Yeah, that's so, true too. Yeah. You know, so if we've got a couple of years experience and someone else has 20, our images are just gonna be different. That's just yeah. the way it is. Number seven, uh, this is a downside only because it stresses me out. <laughs> <laughs> so I am constantly, concerned for the animals that we photograph and there are so many different types of animals I feel like I'm always behind in the learning curve on knowing their behavior their territory and just staying educated and ethical in photography uh, when we were out photographing some owls recently there just happened to be a barbed wire fence and there were some bird experts there and they said oh we're so glad that this fence is here because everybody else was walking up to the owls when they were in a different location and i don't want to do that and by walking up we mean right up to right them. up to them yeah these owls get are within a couple feet yeah, and really disturbing the wildlife. So I never want to disturb the wildlife. I don't want to scare them off. Like a lot of times you might see like an osprey catch a fish and then go land in the tree and eat it for a long time. Well, if I'm going to go disturb it and he leaves, he lost his dinner. Yeah. He doesn't eat again until he finds another fish. And so I don't want to ever do that. I don't want to spook them. I don't want to take them out of their natural habitat. So that's that's only a downside because I care <laughs> and I want to constantly be learning about them and I never want to disturb them or change them. Yeah. Yeah. We do want them to be around a long time so that yeah. our children and grandchildren can photograph them also. Yeah, for sure. So those were our seven downsides to wildlife photography. Do you have any others? Add them to the comments. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so that's what we got to share with you today. Thanks for joining us here on this beautiful um, winter Colorado Colorado afternoon. winter, yeah. <laughs> Evening, <laughs> afternoon, whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's afternoon, mid-afternoon. Yeah. yeah. Five uh, o'clock. <laughs> so thanks for joining us, and we'll see you in the next one. Okay. See ya. Bye. Ugh.